Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of XP Talks. My name is Romy. I work as a client integration at XP Network. Today, here's with me Dima Brook. He's our CTO. And today's aim is XP Network with Shard Dog. Hello, Joe. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, please, can you tell us more about yourself? Sure, yeah. I, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm one half of uh, Shard Dog. Uh, we are a Web3 marketing platform and the easiest way to onboard someone into the near blockchain. Wow, that's great. That's great. Dima? Yes. yes stage is yours. Okay. So, uh, welcome on XP Talks. How are you today? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. And yourself? Uh, me too. It's a sunny, hot day here, like pretty much always. Nice. Uh, where are you located? Uh, I'm in the Northeast United States. So uh, it, it's, it's uh, nice and rainy today. I uh, see. Northeast, it's like the Atlantic Coast. Yes. Some, somewhere close to MIT? Uh, yes, actually very close to MIT. Ah, so you're in Boston? I am, I am. <laughs> very cool. Okay, that's a nice place. Yeah. It's, it's okay, raining, cool. you say? It is. Oh my God, you, you're so <laughs> hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but that's the, the Atlantic coast. It's supposed yeah. to be Atlantic coast. <laughs> It's the ocean, you know? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, tell us about yourself and about the project um, briefly, because we will go deeper into, into that um, as we speak. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're Shard Dog. Um, so Shard Dog is a uh, Web3 marketing platform that really started as a way to onboard people into near protocol as easy as possible. Uh, there's a protocol built on near called Keypom that allows you to really easily create a wallet, um, you know, essentially onboard somebody uh, without having to go through all the different steps of, you know, funding a wallet and getting a, a, a seed phrase and all those things. We were leveraging that to essentially just onboard people more easily, which then eventually turned into, uh, we think, the, the best way to onboard someone into crypto, period. And then from there, we're building out um, a full marketing platform based around uh, what we call our shard dog links. Hmm, so does it mean you create the seed phrase and the wallet and everything for the user? So um, sort of. It's, it's fully non-custodial. And so the beauty of, so if you don't know about, um, anyone in the audience doesn't know about Near Protocol is that they have full account abstraction. And so uh, kind of like what Ethereum is trying to do, uh, Near has had it from day one, and you can really start to uh, do some really creative stuff with the account creation. And what it allows us to do is get, essentially get them into their wallet. Uh, they get their seed phrase if they need it right then, they can get their private key, all of that stuff, they are in full control but it gives them an easy on-ramp into getting into the wallet. And when they do that, uh, what we're actually, the key to what we're doing here is that we're giving them a little bit in near so they can open their wallet. And with the full name, so near uses actually names, just like the ENS, uh, they use full names. So you can create a username. And then you also get an NFT. And that's the key part of what Shardog is doing is that we also provide an NFT during that link. So we're helping projects actually onboard their users. And by having that NFT as like your key card to that, that group, that then kind of gets the ball rolling for the rest of the stuff that we're building. I see. Well, that's very unusual. And that's great that your NFTs have a utility. Uh, do you store any user information somewhere? Or is it somehow connected with the NFT? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, it's fully uh, decentralized. So it's on chain, you know, so, you know, you do see someone's, you know, username holding the particular NFT, but no, we don't store any additional information. It's the goal of reason why we're making this true Web3 marketing platform is to put the ownership of data and privacy back in the user's hands uh, away from that Web2 model. So that way we're looking at different ways that you can still market and reach your audience um, without having to really, you know, invade people's privacy, which I mean, we could always go much further into, but that's kind of what we're trying to get to. I see. Um, are those NFTs transferable? Meaning, uh, for example, if I go um, and uh, log into 
um, near using your platform for the first time in my life. And uh, at some point, I decided to send this NFT to someone else. Mm -hmm. So what happens with my account? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. So you can, you, you still have your account. Um, so the NFT is its own separate entity. So the way that we treat our NFTs is it's part of your community. So um, let's say you have your own, your own shard dog link, Dima, and you say, okay, I want to, you know, I'm going to onboard some people who want to follow my blog post. And so people on board and you have your blog post that people are going to follow and you build your audience. But now somebody doesn't want to be part of your group anymore. Somebody doesn't want to be part of your community. Um, they can just, you know, burn the NFT. They can transfer the NFT. They can do whatever. Or using, you know, XP network, they can actually even transfer to another chain. They can do whatever. And our goal is eventually to be not just near. Near is our core infrastructure because we believe it's the best infrastructure uh, uh, in Web3. And so then as we expand out further, we'll be able to better serve everyone, uh, regardless of what chain you're coming from. I see. Well, I absolutely agree with you that Nier is a great platform, uh, is a great protocol. We also enjoy uh, working with Nier. Um, we never saw any problems with the blockchain, unlike we saw with some other chains. I won't mention the names. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but yeah, cool. Okay, so... That, that's an amazing, amazing project. So basically, this NFT is just a supplement to the onboarding process. And it's not really, um, nothing is hard coded, not, nothing is like hard linked. And uh, if you lose your NFT or burn it or send it somewhere, it will not impact uh, your account. That, that, right? that's, that's completely correct. And you can collect multiple of them. So if you think of it like a, a passport to your fan clubs, Right, so people that I want to follow, communities I want to be part of, so I can have multiple shard dog links in my wallet, so multiple of these NFTs, and now from there I can, you know, what we're, when you go onto our platform, you'll be able to follow along and communicate and be part of all of these communities uh, through that. So it's not just about your one initial account; you can start to actually expand and be part of multiple communities through it. I see, I see. So the main utility of the NFT is uh, it's like a membership in the community, right? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's right. It's like membership into that. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, very, very cool. And uh, what benefits uh, do community members have? Like if I'm a member of a community, what do I have extra to when I wasn't a member of the community? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the way... And, and this is a little bit of a new paradigm, I think, of moving from Web 2 to Web 3. And we're really trying to help creators, especially smaller creators and projects, you know, be able to find and build that audience. Where it's becoming so difficult now, even if in like Web 2, where, you know, the data tracking is harder, people are more skeptical about giving away their email or their phone number, um, all these different pieces. This allows you to have some, you know, pseudonymous privacy you know, as part of a community. And you as that community owner, you know, we're, we're building out tools, what we're calling our dog park, you know, keeping the dog theme. We're building out tools for creators and for projects to do these different things like provide maybe loyalty rewards, maybe provide early access. If you're a musician and you have a song that you want to release to your community first, you could do that through our platform in a way that only you know, people who are part of your community can hear it first. Uh, if you are a writer, you know, uh, if you make film, whatever it might be, where our goal is to support all of that. So that way you can really reward your community all the way through. Now, on top of that, you can also just use the basics of crypto, of where I want to airdrop a token. I, you know, I, I create a new token for my community. I can now airdrop it through our platform. If I want to just reward them with near or, to, or an NFT ticket, or maybe if they collect X number of them, um, like a great example is near week is a newsletter, the official newsletter of near protocol. And every week when they release their newsletter, they release a new shard dog that has the cover of the newsletter. And so over time you start, you can collect all of the covers, you know, and then at some point if near week wants to then take it a step further, they can see like who has every cover that we've released, you know, can we reward them with something? Maybe at the big near conference this year, anyone, anyone who has X number of covers can do something, right? So it's up to the creator to do that. 
but we're giving them those tools to be able to do that. Okay, that sounds very interesting and uh, amazing that you are providing such an easy way for creators to integrate with the uh, Web3 world. Yeah, cool. Um, I also see that you have uh, the, the logo of your project is a dog. Mm -hmm. Uh, so can I can you explain why it's a dog? Like are you sure. guys big dog lovers, or how did you even come up with this name? And uh, yeah, you, you know, great question. So I am a dog lover. I've always had a dog since I was a little kid. It's been been stirred on my whole life. Uh, I have two dogs right now. Um, <clears throat> so definitely uh, that's part of it. But really, actually, Shard Dog started as uh, my original idea was supposed to be a kind of a wallet watchdog. Um, there was no real at the time like notification system to track, you know, transactions coming in and out of your wallet. There, there have been come since then, but at the time there really wasn't anything. And near is one of the big selling points of technology is sharding. And so that's where the shard comes from. So it was shard dog. Um, and then I, I just wasn't overly passionate about the idea of building a wallet watcher. I didn't feel like there was a lot of utility there. And then uh, when we started working with that Keypalm protocol that I mentioned earlier and saw the power of really what you could start to do there with the advanced account abstraction, uh, that's where uh, my co-founder, Jared, who is in the audience, uh, we got together and said, like, you know, we could really make something special here and started with the onboarding, which has now led to the full marketing uh, play. Yeah, that's that's a great story. It's amazing that you love animals, especially dogs. Uh, I also like them. Unfortunately, I don't have any. <laughs> okay. My next question is, you have this uh, manifesto. Can you tell us a bit why it's important and what is the essence of this manifesto? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, so the manifesto really is about like the value of what both Jared and I believe that NFTs are for. So if you know anyone who's been around crypto for a while now, especially the past few years, there's this NFT craze that was all about speculation and about flipping and rugs and all the negative things. And we've got to a point where I think the larger sentiment about NFTs was largely negative because of all the speculation. And really, we know, we believe that the power of NFT is really in the technology and really in what you can do beyond that. It's not just about, you know, flipping pictures, which again, like we're not necessarily opposed to. I mean, we, you know, we both hold NFTs from different things and we both have bought and sold them. We just think the long term value and the real uh, importance of an NFT is much more than that. It's not about speculation. And so we want to get across that. We think that NFTs are extremely valuable, so they are very valuable to hold, but they're really worthless to flip. And so that is the key of what we're trying to get across is that it's really about what it represents more so than the speculation on the, on the NFT itself. Yeah, we're also not super happy about NFTs being used for fraud or for, you know, uh, being building Ponzi schemes. And we hope that eventually... Uh, they will be used for good purposes only. Yes. And th th that's actually our biggest hope because we're an NFT bridge. And uh, just because we believe that it's a cool technology, uh, we are doing that. Uh, so we believe that NFTs are an instant registration of ownership rights or th they also allow you to pass those ownership rights also instantly within one transaction. And anything that... Um, can be owned, basically can be registered as an NFT. Yep. So that's what it, it's about, this technology is about. And it's uh, public, it's verifiable, so all those features make it super valu valuable. Unfortunately, people used it for, for bad uh, purposes before, but eventually, probably it was a necessary step as well. M m many technologies uh, start as something bad, and then eventually they, they become something good. For example, some technologies used in weapons uh, sometimes start being used by civilians and something bad becomes something good. For example, even let's take uh, explosives, right? Explosive, uh, explosives are used at war, but you can also explode uh, stones at quarries and then extract uh, valuable resources instead of digging it manually, right? So some technologies have to go through this bad stage and then be used 
for the benefit of of humanity. Absolutely. Or you can also, you can also speak about the nuclear energy, right? Uh, we first saw the nuclear bomb and then nuclear power plants. Again, pretty much the same as explosives. So, speaking about your NFT collection, I noticed that almost sixteen thousand items were minted, right? Yes. Since oh, you start when did when did you start when? So we started. People start minting uh, early March is really when we, we kind of started um, rolling out links. Uh, so we, we started very slowly and controlled where we had a few uh, creators come on and, and start some links then. Uh, but we've really started to ramp that up more in the past uh, probably two, two, three months. Yeah, so that was a, that's a very short time. And you have so many NFTs minted. Some, some projects uh, have only 10,000 NFTs in their collection and they barely um, have half of that minted. And you have Almost sixteen thousand, so sixteen hundred. Uh, yeah, sixteen thousand. Yeah, correct. How, how, yeah. How, how um, is your project so successful? How how did you get so many NFTs minted? Uh, so I, I will say it, it really comes down to two things. One is like we have an awesome community that has really helped us build in public, and that's been one of the things that we've tried to emphasize from day one. Uh, you know, our earliest version of Shard Dog, the Shard Dog link, was really not. I wouldn't say clunky; like it worked well, um, but it was just something like it just looked really raw and it was really simple. And we listened to you know the people in the community who were using them and wanted them, and we allowed ourselves to take that feedback and continue to iterate on the different options of what the link could do and how we could refine it. Uh, we're getting close to now launching our third version of our actual claim process, which is by far the fastest yet. And we've continued to get faster at being able to do that. So that way you could use it at a conference where, you know, it's typically bad internet. It's hard to onboard people in, you know, in person because they want to just get on their way. Um, they don't want to save a seed phrase anywhere, that kind of stuff. And so we've continued to just build on top of that and, you know, see, you know, go as fast as we can uh, to make sure our product is really meeting those demands. Great. Um, it also became very interesting to me. Who are the team of your project and uh, how many people are working on that um, amazing technology that people are so happy about? Uh, it's just uh, Jared and I. So uh, Jared is in, in, in marketing and, uh, he is an expert marketer, uh, and he does handles all of that and all of the operational piece of that. And uh, I am the, the developer, so it's just the two of us. Okay, I see. I see. Got it. Um, so you, as a developer, enjoy near technology, and there are four shards. Yeah. So I, I started. Um, you know, I I took the typical path. I think a lot of people did in crypto, of like you know, you poke around Bitcoin. Uh, you you forget to buy it years ago. Uh, then you you know you go to Ethereum and you try that out and I tried building some stuff and uh, I've worked in Web two now for almost two decades where you know and I just I never really caught on to developing on Ethereum when Near got started um, I got into it uh, the end of 2021 and I just was super impressed of how much easier it was to actually build on it and get a working product out the door and uh, really get to a point that uh, it felt like I was doing something unique and different that was outside of Web2. And then as they continue to grow and now have the blockchain operating system, uh, it's truly just become one of the best places to really build and use that infrastructure to really do whatever you want. Um, and I've tried the other chains. I've worked, on, I've worked on Aptos. I've worked on Solana. I've done... All the different, you know, I've been through that process, and I just keep coming back to Near because of just how great it is to build here. Right. So you tried Ethereum, Solana, and Aptos, and uh, eventually you selected Near as your best friend. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, can you share why? Yeah. So Near Near does a couple different things that I think are really, for me as a developer, allow me to both move faster and be more efficient and really actually do some stuff that's creative outside the box. Uh, one is the account abstraction. It's, it's second to none. Um, you know, again, I, all of the hype and the discussion that comes around, like Ethereum trying to get to it and some other chains that kind of have some 
halfway abstraction. Uh, Nier has had it from day one, and they really do it very well. And you can really do a lot of creative things um, with that. I mean, you could probably do a two-hour seminar just on their account abstraction. The second part is that it's really easy to work here. Um, yeah, like the contracts are written in Rust, and if you don't know Rust, uh, that can be a little bit of uh, a, a, a barrier for some people. But you could have, you know, early on, you could always write in uh, assembly, you know, WebAssembly, um, you know, um, and then now you can write fully in JavaScript. Everything is in JavaScript now. So if you're a JavaScript developer, you can write a smart contract here. You can write components. You can build on the boss, uh, the blockchain operating system. You can do everything if you just know JavaScript. And that's amazing for, you know, getting help and onboarding people and all of that stuff. But for me as a solo developer, being able to leverage things that are on part of the blockchain operating system, which is fully open, uh, and so you can do all kinds of different, that's, again, that's a whole other conversation too. And then being able to actually really leverage stuff that is baked into the protocol saves so much time, um, you know, to just get out the door. Yeah, sounds very attractive <laughs> for a developer <laughs> that uh, many things are um, already out of the box and you just have to properly integrate them with your front end, I guess. And then there you go. So your smart contract, your your um, shard dog smart contract is written in JavaScript. No, ours is, or is it in ours is in Rust. Ours is in Rust. Yeah, you, you can so you can write contracts on on near in JavaScript. Um, they do have a full uh, compiler for that. Uh, but no, I mean ours are are in Rust. I feel comfortable enough writing in that. But um, for me though, as someone who goes to conferences and talks to different people. To be able to say, hey, you, maybe you don't, you know, aren't comfortable with Rust because Rust does have a learning curve, um, but you can still come and work here using JavaScript is just huge. Yeah, correct. Well, we actually never tried uh, JavaScript. I don't know if it was there when we started. So our contract are also written in Rust because anyway, it's written in Rust for Solana for Multiversex. Right. Pretty much Optus. It's not really Rust. There, it's Move, but similar. Plus minus, it's Rust. Yeah. It's like. No, oh, it's like Rust with less functionality. I think. <laughs> yeah, but when when uh, it throws errors, the errors are exactly identical to Rust. Yes. So basically, it's Rust. Okay. Right. Uh, very very exciting uh, to hear about all that and uh, to hear from such an enthusiast on uh, near. I also enjoy the technology, so I completely share your feelings. Um, can you tell us about the projects that you are saying you're supporting, like Near Week, um, Murder Mystery Collective, and DC, and so on, the ones on your website? Yeah. Who are they? What What do you mean by supporting them? Sure. That's a, so uh, we're at the point now, we just actually launched our, our 200th Shard Dog. Um, some of these are now like some, the same project maybe has maybe a half dozen or more. Uh, but yeah, we... so. Uh, Projects in the near ecosystem are here to actually leverage Shard Dog. So we'll, I'll use Near Week first as an example because they're uh, definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest, right now. Where again, they they use Shard Dog to reach their audience. So their link uh, just shard.dog slash Near Week, uh, and you can when you land on that page, uh, you can sign up right there for their newsletter. That is where you use an email. Uh, we are not storing that. That is for signing up for the newsletter. And then from there, if you have a near account already, you can mint that week's cover. If you don't, you can create a near account right there. And, and, and upon creating it, you don't have to do a second step. You create the wallet and then the NFT and that cover comes right to your new wallet. And then you're off to the races. And what we do with near week is that they can funnel them actually back to the newsletter. So now you can read it. But any different project that comes with us, whether it's like Murder Mystery Club, who has done a lot of different really cool things with us, where they, they're a game, uh, like a murder mystery detective game uh, on there. And we've done things where we've supported them doing raffles uh, and giveaways so people could claim uh, a particular NFT that they won. We've, actually, we've also helped did an onboarding with them where people who did not own one of their main NFTs could actually mint a Shard Dog NFT and still get into the game. 
And so it was a way for them to allow people who were outside of the ecosystem to come into their game uh, in a really easy manner. Uh, but we also support like, you know, independent creators as well. Um, so uh, Naomi, so now, so she comes to us and every time she holds the spaces or she has some big blog post, we can do a shard dog for her and she can actually, you know, uh, make that a moment, right? So people can collect those and say, I was here when she did this presentation or she did this spaces. And now you're building out this, you know, timeline of experiences. And for her as a creator down the road, as we build out a, a larger platform, she'll be able to go in and see all of these super fans who have been to every one of her talks. And that's, again, I can hopefully maybe guide her of like, how do I then work with my audience down the road? Wow, that's a lot. So you don't only integrate individual users, but you integrate whole projects into near ecosystem. Yeah, so that's, and that's really, I, and I, I want to emphasize, like, if you haven't seen the Shard Dog link, the power of it really, though, is like, it's super simple. And so the idea is that, like, everything happens in one or two clicks for you, and you're just there. So, like, if you are a project and you are using our service, so you're using the Shard Dog link to onboard people, to get people into your project, you know, from the, the point of, like, hey, I don't have a wallet to I'm actually viewing your now your website, not, not a Shardog website, but your website is really two clicks and they can be off and running. And now they've been, they've gotten a new wallet and they've been funneled to your actual website, to your actual project. And that's really the power of what we're doing. And that's where that marketing audience building really comes from. Okay, amazing. So you're basically a door opener to your ecosystem for everybody. Yes. Makes it as easy as a couple of clicks and you're there. That's right. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Okay, so um, how did you even encounter XP Network and uh, what is your interest um, in the NFT bridge? Yeah. Uh, why, why do you want to bridge something? Maybe where? Do you want to bridge your NFTs? So let's speak about that. Yeah, so um, I, I came across XP Network um, just, I think, it was first when it was preliminary announced that you guys were building your bridge to near, And so uh, just as someone who was deep in this ecosystem, I wanted to, you know, I'm just always checking out new things and seeing the ease of use and how simple it was to bridge both ways uh, really kind of opened some thoughts for both Jared and I of like, what are the possibilities here? Because the reality of it is that, you know, we don't want it. This product should not be something that is really near only. It's something that we really want to focus on uh, that we can onboard multiple communities, <clears throat> but we want to leverage the near like I said before, we want to leverage the near infrastructure. I don't want to rewrite things for other chains. Um, I, I just, as I said now a few times, I think near is the best infrastructure. I don't want to go away from that by any means, but I want to be able to support other communities. So uh, the XP bridge really opens up a door for us to experiment and look at different ways of, you know, what that looks like. And some of the experiments that we've looked at so far of just, you know, can we take someone who is coming like from Solana, who wants to onboard, they come through our system and then they, they can save their Shardog NFT in their Solana wallet instead. You know, so they, we would still make them a near wallet because we need to do some of that for the infrastructure, but they never need to see it. They know, you know, because of the account abstraction. So your bridge allows us to really start exploring those things. And that's what we're working on uh, right now in the background of, how do we leverage more of that across all the different chains? Okay, that sounds very interesting. So basically, you're just sending NFTs to other chains and then scout for users and then uh, bring them back to near ecosystem? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the ultimate goal. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a lofty one. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's the idea of being able to really, again, reach out to communities that are on these other chains and, and be able to do that and really be able to make sure that the users are also feeling comfortable in that experience. And this is something where I think Jared and I over the years, where we've been in crypto for a while now, 
across these different chains that the users at these different chains are, have different behaviors and expectations. You know, I would say typically like someone at, on Solana is very comfortable or more comfortable using, you know, a, a particular wallet and like that's just part of the process. And so giving them a new wallet um, is not necessarily is not necessary really for someone coming from Solana and it doesn't really make sense. Their account abstraction is very different, a different setup. But, you know, they understand the NFT process and all of those other things that go along with it. And so for us, if we can reach some of those communities by being able to say, look, you can come and you can onboard to a project, not to necessarily near, but to a project. We leverage the near ecosystem. We leverage the near infrastructure to, you know, mint super cheap to be able to actually, you know, have some components that allow us to do some, uh, you know, whether it's more advanced routing or whatever that might be. And then, hey, you want to save your shard dog, though, over in your Solana wallet, cool, we'll help, you know, using the XP bridge, we can help do that. So those are just the doors that start to open for us that we hope long term really help bring everything together. Right. So you can also do what some of the projects um, already accomplished. For example, games, when they bridge their NFTs to another chain, they also look for new users. And they just start listening to the contract on that other chain and whoever owes uh, this NFT on the other chain is also eligible for participating in the game. Right? You don't have to listen to the contract only on near. You can also right. do it on other chain. And then it makes sense for them to stay there where they are, where they feel comfortable, where they have uh, browser extension wallets or mobile wallets, whatever they choose. But they can still be part of your community regardless uh, of the fact that they're on a different protocol. Right. And this is, this is how you can, can kind of softly... <laughs> Uh, bring more users to near ecosystem eventually, right? Because if you have more events and things on near, you can uh, slowly uh, pull them towards near ecosystem, and that's how you can uh, grow the the market of near. Exactly. Yeah, I, I love that, and that's why. And again, so I for people on the call who might not know much, but you know the blockchain operating system that is near's big push right now so that is something that is really building towards being a fully decentralized kind of front end that runs multiple chains so you know you can be on near and use one of these these front ends and still connect to ethereum to polygon you know to all these different other chains and the beauty of that is again for us as a product building on near is like just like you said, right? So you can come in and we can build this front end leveraging the boss on near, allow you to connect your Polygon wallet, your Ethereum wallet, whatever that might be. And then on top of that, we really have a nice opportunity to then do things like you were just saying, right? To, to read other contracts. And we can do this all in one space it, that I think is a really unique proposition right now in Web3 that you can't really do anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. And that's why you need the bridge. So yeah. you can send it there. And they're like your messengers on, on another in another world. Yes. Right. Um, do you think that you have any competitors in near the ecosystem or in any other blockchain? Because I don't know that I'm in, I know many projects that do something that you are doing. So, I, I mean, I guess... To be, I I'm, I feel like no, no, I guess to some degree, but I, I mean that in a way of like I think we're just trying to do a completely different paradigm. I don't mean it kind of to be, you know, uh, uh, bragging or anything. I just I don't think anyone is really attempting to do something like this. There's proof of participation things that are going on, you know, that are more po op focused. Uh, they are definitely different things. Like drip on Solana is really cool. That you know they're they're uh, promoting artists. And creators and being able to, you know, send out um, all the way across, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of NFTs that I think is something really special. It's not what we're doing, though. I, I don't think anybody's really onboarding the way that we're doing it. Because, again, for us, it's not just about onboarding you onto Near and onto Web3. It's really about helping you onboard to a particular project or a creator. Because, again, the ultimate goal is that we don't want to just keep bringing in more native crypto people. Like that just becomes this, you know, circle that doesn't really help anybody. We want to be able to go to people who are not crypto natives and say, look, here's a platform that allows you to build an audience, reach the people 
and this is how you can do it. And the reason why we're using the power of the blockchain to do this for you, you know, and here's what we're, we're going to do. So that's why I don't, I, I just have not seen anyone else really taking this step further of what we're trying to do. Yeah, same here. I haven't heard about any other project that does what you're doing. So why don't you scale? Why don't you uh, make it possible for the other chains to onboard uh, Web2 users as easily as you do on Near? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I'm one man. Um, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a very fast developer. I'm not that good. Um, but we are trying to grow and, and uh, we will be trying to raise money soon and make this a, a full thing. Uh, Jared and I have had uh you know full-time jobs this has been kind of something we've been trying to build as uh, on the side as to see where it would go uh clearly we've had some really strong traction and so these are things that we are absolutely trying to do because we do believe in uh shard dog in the long term yeah so then there'll be no question about who is a competitor of shard dog yes uh, shard dog on another chain will be competitor of a shard dog here <laughs> right. Right? So, <laughs> you'll basically just do it everywhere <clears throat> how, how do, do you think you are already successful or do you think um there's something you can do better uh faster cheaper quicker so uh i will say in in some ways we absolutely feel that we are successful in the sense that like we we've proven this model even on a smaller scale. So, you know, uh, it, I think we're, we're super proud and super happy for the entire community that we were able to hit, you know, 15,000 minted NFTs and having all the different projects that are on here. Um, and I think that's a really uh, exciting moment because it shows that there is power in this paradigm that we're trying to get across. For us, though, I mean, this is not really, we don't feel that we're, we've hit anywhere near what we think this success level can be. Um, we really haven't released any of the larger marketing tools yet where that stuff is uh, still coming very soon. Uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, we have a, a new version of our claim. It's even faster. We think we can get people um, through that process even faster. Uh, we just debuted a new way of creating a wallet uh, at near APAC uh, in Vietnam this past weekend that even with poor internet service and crowded, uh, you know, groups that we were able to get people uh, a new wallet and mint an NFT within seconds. And so we want to keep improving and iterating on that a as we go. So the more that we can uh, do that stuff and get these tools out the door, that's where we start to see success. But, uh, you know, we're very uh, humbled by the support that we've had so far, uh, but we do feel that like we have a, a long ways to go. Yeah, I believe one day uh, bloggers on YouTube and Instagram or whatever they uh, post their blogs will say, hi, if you want to quickly onboard Web3, go to Shardog. And then they will show a tutorial how to use your platform to quickly onboard. They'll say, hey, look, just in a couple of clicks, <laughs> you know, and then any blockchain is available to you, something like this. <laughs> that, that, that is, you know, you see that, and that's something Jared and I talk about all the time. Uh, we, we, we think that there is really something there. We think for, like you said, like those type of creators, especially, I mean, this is a product that as things become, I guess, more complicated in web two, you know, where, you know, they're, they're blocking cookies in different browsers now and you can't track your people and all that stuff, which I think is great for privacy. I, I, I love all of that. It's very hard as a small business or as a creator to, still convert and build an audience off of that. And we hope that people see that the blockchain is not scary and that not everything in crypto is a scam and that people can actually come here and actually leverage um, this technology to do that type of stuff. And, you know, influencers and YouTubers, I mean, this would be a, a we feel, an ideal platform for them in the future. Right. Okay. So we dreamed a little bit and now let's uh, also think uh, what will happen with the NFT market? Like, what, what are you observing right now? And what do you think will happen with the NFT market uh, within one, three years? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think it's like the writing has been on the wall for a while. And I'll credit my co founder and partner, Jared. I, he's been on this meta for, uh, I mean, <laughs> probably before anybody else, where just I think the over speculation of NFTs was, was just dying out. And, 
uh, it's really kind of hit a wall. And we see that in the pricing and I think the things that have happened uh, over, especially the past, probably, you know, three to six months has really exacerbated that. But I do think that the NFT marketplace is something that is going to continue to evolve. There are definitely projects that are still sustainable. There are definitely projects that are doing things that are really interesting. Um, I think you look at, you know, Pudgy Penguins on Ethereum, of how they started to, you know, expand into real life products. And you look at, you know, I think different gaming projects. If you have come on to Near here that are, are leveraging NFTs through their gaming platform, uh, I, it's really something where uh, we're just at the surface of what's the next version of NFTs. And so there'll always be that community. I think there'll always be a little bit of speculation, the opportunity for DGENs. And I think that will always kind of be there. That's in every part of culture and life. But I think when you really look long term, this is now that transition period of projects that can, you know, get creative with the NFTs and really find community around it and find purpose, you know, not just utility. I think utility gets overused and that a purpose for what's, you know, that community and that NFT is for. Those are the ones that start to be successful. But we're, I think we're, we're so early in what the next step is that, you know, after this, the rest of the speculation fully dies out, that will be a really exciting time. Yeah. Well, actually, NFTs can be even used uh, for tracking consumer goods or for representing them. Like, for example, imagine you bought something abroad and then um, imagine how it could be if everything were, block were uh, based on the blockchain. The producer of this good, let's say a T-shirt. Like, let's say you bought a T-shirt somewhere. I don't know, maybe in Taiwan, okay? And then you live somewhere very far from that, let's say the United States. And uh, you can see how the producer of this uh, asset sent the NFT representing this purchase of yours with this T-shirt, uh, let's say to, to the transporting com tra transportation company. And then you can track how it arrived uh, to another uh, transportation company, for example, in your um, country. And then you can see how you can track all the way and you can see where it is. Everything is on the blockchain. Everything is public. So you can just track the, the way this, this NFT moves and then eventually it arrives to you. It can be used even like this. So there, there are so many ways <laughs> how, how NFTs can be used. Um, also, I have a friend. They have a very successful uh, business already in uh, that they have a platform where uh, people can register patents for inventions. Mm -hmm. Right now it's in Web 2. It's not in Web 3 yet, but he's thinking um, about moving it to Web 3 because it makes more sense and it becomes more trackable. So they also want to mint the patents as NFTs or even SFTs, semi-fungible tokens. Uh, they're different from NFTs in terms that they have an amount, which means mm -hmm. it's, it's an, like they have a token ID unlike fungible tokens but they can be more than one. So for example, if I have a patent for some technology, I can sell this patent to the United States, to Canada, to Mexico, to, I don't know, the European Union, right? And that would be the same patent, but sent to different um, owners. That could Very be an cool. SFT, right? Yeah. And these are, basically that's the technology, okay? Not just pictures that you buy and sell for hundreds of dollars without even understanding why it works. Yeah, as, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I love the stuff. I, I know some people working on like decentralized science stuff and like, you know, research and being able to log research through NFTs and be able to do verification. Um, yeah, I think I think the the so the limits here are just, you know, really we haven't we don't know what the limits are right now. And I'm just right. excited to see where it goes. Do you maybe have any questions to us as a bridge since you already encountered our company and started bridging? Yeah, I, I think maybe, you know, it'd probably even be good just for everyone to kind of hear is that, you know, uh, for, for small projects, I, I think what sometimes happens is that it becomes daunting even for small projects. It's like, oh, how do I incorporate a bridge? And you hear about, like, uh, you know, financial bridge hacks and everything else. Like, w what makes your guys' bridge, I think, so much easier to use? And why is this something that even a solo dev like me can just kind of jump in and start doing stuff. 
Well, um, our bridge is available to the world um, in several uh, forms. Uh, the easiest form for the users is to go to our UI, to the front end of the bridge, uh, just connect the wallet of your choice, depending on the chain of departure, because you're assigning your transactions on the chain of departure. And basically select the NFT from the UI. We have a, an NFT indexer, which collects the information about your NFTs uh, by your wallet, Co brings this information uh, to, to the UI so that you can easily select the one you want to bridge. You just click it. The next step is you approve, which means you tell the uh, NFT collection contract that it's okay that the bridge contract is going to do something with your NFT, and then you transfer. Okay, Th this is how it works. It's very, very easy. It's also a couple of clicks. So the first click is you connect the wallet. The second click, you, you select an NFT. Third click, you approve. And fourth click, you send. Very easy. For developers, we have a special library. It's called xp.network, the same as the name of our company, so that it's easy to remember. You can find it in the NPM repository. You can install it with NPM, with Yarn, with uh, PNPM, with Yarn of second or third version. It's all, it, it works on all of those uh, platforms, or I mean, with, with all those package managers. And from this uh, library, you can use the full power of the bridge without the UI. So you can integrate it into any uh, product. It can be a marketplace, a game, a metaverse, or any anything that I can think of now. The users don't even have to know that you're using our bridge in, in the background. They, But of course, they will have to sign at least two transactions, approve and uh, transfer with their wallet. And that will be your responsibility if you decide to integrate this library. But other than that, all the functionality is abstracted away for you there. Uh, what do I mean by abstracted away? Uh, our bridge integrates uh, many chain protocols that are not identical. Even though maybe the whole idea of a blockchain and how it works uh, looks the same, but the technology used and the implementation details are very different. But in our library, it's unified. You call the functions with the same name, you provide pretty much the same parameters to those functions, and it works. And you, it, you don't care how it works. It's not your headache. Um, everything is done by the library. It's the same same um, interface for Near, for Solana, for Ethereum, for Aptos, all the same interface. So you call the same functions with the same name, provide pretty much the same parameters. You don't care how it works inside. It, it's, it happens under the hood. So that's the library. And the third way is a widget. So a widget is like the front end of the bridge, but it can be embedded very quickly within minutes with a full functionality of the bridge, but you can set uh, how it will look and you can even select the chains and wallets that will be supported in your widget. It, it, it's done very quickly. We have two video tutorials how to do it. It's super simple and it will take you just minutes to integrate. Uh, another cool feature about the widget is that you can also set a reward for hosting the widget. Uh, when you start um, integrating the widget, you actually register it. And this um, ID of the widget will be used uh, for us to reward you for hosting the widget. You can uh, generate this iframe of the widget, embed it, you can embed it in a game, also in a marketplace, in your website, anywhere you like. We have uh, several projects who already integrated our bridge and their communities use the bridge from their websites. So they didn't even have to go to our website. And they um, selected which chains they want their community to bridge to or to bridge from, uh, limiting them on purpose so that they don't, uh, by accident, send it somewhere where they don't have infrastructure waiting for those NFTs. So that's the purpose of a widget. Well, that's... That's how it works with users. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, for just for myself, your SDK was super easy. And again, knowing the complications that come with having to, you know, deploy contracts on other chains or, you know, worrying about that other infrastructure to be able, like you said, to write something once and then use it across multiple chains uh, it was really powerful. And that's always what we're looking at. And again, just the efficiency of being able to keep our team 
uh, small and lean at this point is super important. So uh, that was a big selling point for us. Right. Okay. So let's continue with you. Uh, what is your roadmap for the nearest year, if you have one? Yeah, uh, we, we, we certainly do. Um, so, yeah, uh, we, we're in the next probably uh, week two, we're going to release our, our next version uh, of our claim process, which uh, we're really excited about. It's going to be our fastest ever. Uh, we, right behind that is we have our first iteration of our what we call the dog park uh, tools, which will be for those creators to actually start managing their audience and uh, start to you know, leverage some of that ability of whether it's distributing content or whatever else it might be. Um, that's coming right there. Uh, we then are looking at kind of growing out the larger, uh, again, focusing still on just near right now, of uh, really growing out the reach of how projects are being able to use us. So some of the different tools that we've been talking to different projects of incorporating is things around more multimedia type of stuff to really allow people who are true creators start to leverage what we're doing. So that's going to be our main focus right now. Uh, we are building, and a lot of our components that we're building are open source through the box. Um, some are not, but a lot of them will be, and that's uh, an important piece of you know building on the open web as well. Great, and I hope that you will add to your roadmap uh, bridging to other chains with XP Network. Absolutely, that is. Yep, no, that, that's, that's, yeah, I, I didn't explicitly say it, but yeah, that's something that we always, uh, we really want to get uh, better ingrained so that way when people do come from other chains, uh, they do feel comfortable and empowered to do whatever they want with their NFTs. Right. And as we approach the one hour mark, please tell the audience uh, how they can find you, how they can track your progress, and how they can join your community. Yeah, uh, the, the best way right now is to uh, follow us here on, on, on X. Uh, you know, check out, you know, uh, we post everything here. Uh, anytime there's like a big release by a project, we like to share it uh, here as well. Uh, you can also, uh, if you are on Near and you want to see some of the stuff that we're building live uh, and you get to kind of beta test some of the things too, uh, we have our own version of of near social which we forked called shard doc social you can log in with your near account and you can see some of the different tools and things that we're building so it's just shard dog that dot social but our main website is shard dot dog and you can kind of go from there all right so if we go to your website can we find the links to all the other resources the, our twitter yes um i will i have not linked our other site yet but i would i would that will be yeah, there very soon. Be, yeah, great to, to see yeah. the links so that uh, people will easily find them without having to go to different platforms and documentations of near find Absolutely. you because you're an absolutely amazing project um, allowing for easy onboarding. And uh, I think it's a must for everybody to uh, quickly find you so that they painlessly join near community. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm very happy to have this conversation with you. You're an absolutely amazing project and I'm happy that we are partners. And I hope to work more with you um, in the nearest future and help you uh, expand your community and bring uh, more users to a wonderful near ecosystem. And uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, no, th thanks for having me and I, I absolutely look forward to working together more. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thank you, uh, the audience who came today and who will be watching this um, on YouTube in a recording. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, not to miss our future videos like this. And um, thanks for coming. See you. Bye.